just going to look at some different problems here. Um, you see, it's nice. When we're doing an exercise on permutations, we know we're doing permutations. When we're doing an exercise on combinations, we know it's combinations. But the reality is we get a problem and we have to decide how we're going to approach it. So let's just look at some. This one's from the 2007 HSC. Mr. and Mrs. Roberts and their four children are going to the theatre. They're randomly allocated six adjacent seats in the single row. What's the probability that the four children are allocated seats next to each other? I'll chuck it all into one fraction at once. Now, where do all these things come from? Well, the bottom of the fraction is the total number of arrangements, no restrictions. So we're arranging six people. That would be six factorial. On the top of the fraction, I've got three factorial, four factorial. So where did that come from? Well, the four children want to be together. So they're going to be in Jason's seats. So we work out their arrangement. That's four factorial. Then, as far as we're concerned, we now have three objects, the group of the four children plus the two uh, parents as well. So that's the three factorial there. And that works out to be one in five. One in five. Let's look at an extension two one because they're much more fun. A bag contains 12 red marbles and 12 yellow marbles. Six marbles are selected at random without replacement. Calculate the probability that exactly three of those marbles are red. There's my answer. So where does that one come from? Bottom of the fraction, total possibilities, no restrictions. But this is a combination, not a permutation. We don't care the order that we pull these marbles out. We're just getting the marbles. So 24C6. Then on the top of the fraction, we want three red marbles. So 3 from 12, 12C3, which means we must be getting three yellow ones as well. So 12C3 on the top as well. So the two decimal places, 0.36. Hence, or otherwise, calculate the probability that more than three of the selected marbles are red. So more than three. Well, if it's more than three, that means four are red, five are red, or six are red. So we could do that. So on the top of the fraction, if four are red, that's 12C4, but then two are yellow, 12C2, or, so plus, five are red, 12C5, which means one's yellow, 12C1, or plus, six are red, 12C6, and well, I put 12C north there, but we don't really need it. 12C north's equal to one. And that works out to be 0.32. But the interesting thing is they said or otherwise. And actually, what I just did there is actually the or otherwise when you think about it. Because part I, I had worked out the probability of three red. Where did I use that in my solution? I didn't. But they've said hence. So there must be a way of using part I, and it's actually quite good. This is how you use part I. Probability of greater than three red. I'm going to use the complementary idea. It'll be one minus then the probability that three are red minus the probability that less than three are red. But you see, everything's equally likely. And also the probability of less than three red must be the same as the probability of greater than three yellow. So I've got less than three red. I must have more than three yellow. But as I say, they're equally likely. So the probability of greater than three yellow must be the same as the probability of greater than three red. I now look at this and say, hey, I've got an equation. Two lots of the probability of greater than three red must be one minus the probability of three red, which was my answer in part A, which I can now use and get the final answer. So that's how the, the hence way would have worked on this problem. Let's do a real good one. Strap yourselves in. Right, in a chess match between a home team and an away team, a game is played on four boards. On each board, the probability that the home team wins is 0.2, probability of a draw is 0.6, and the probability of the home team losing is 0.2. The results are recorded by listing the outcomes of the games for each board in board order. So the example they've got there is if the home team wins on board two, uh, that should be board one, shouldn't it? Wins on board one, draws on board two, loses on board three, draws on board four, it would be WDLD would be the outcome. So how many different recordings are possible? Well, on each board, there's three possible outcomes. 
So it'll be three times three times three times three, just using our basic counting idea, we end up with 81. There's 81 different recordings we could have. Calculate the probability of the result which ends up win, draw, loss, draw. There's a 0.2 chance of a win on board one. There is a 0.6 chance of a draw, then a 0.2 chance of a loss, and finally a 0.6 chance of a draw. That gives us an answer of 0.144. Now it gets interesting. Teams get one point for a win, half a point for a draw, and zero points for a loss. What's the probability that the home team scores more points than the away team? So what I did is I said, I'm gonna first work out the probability that they end up with the same number of points. How could we do that? Well, there could be four draws. They would then end up with the same number of points. That's 0.1296. Uh, two wins, two losses. They would end up with the same number of points. So two wins, 0.2 squared, two losses, 0.2 squared, but then how many ways could we arrange the letters WWLL? So four factorial on two factorial, two factorial. That gives us 0 0.0096. What else could happen? We could have one win, one loss, and two draws. 0.2 times 0.2 times 0.6 squared, but then times the number of ways you could arrange WLDD. So four factorial on two factorial. I think that's it. So adding them all up, we get 0.312. So that's the probability that the two teams get equal points. Therefore, the probability that they get unequal points must be one less than that. But remember, everything's equally likely. Therefore, the home team scoring more than the away team must be half of the unequal points. And we get 0.344. Because these are so good, let's do another. Pack of nine cards. They're numbered one to nine. Three cards are drawn at random, put on a table from left to right. It creates a number. What's the probability that that number exceeds 400? Probability of greater than 400 must be simply six out of nine. It really doesn't matter what the last two cards are. It's just what the first card is. And so six of them would be bigger than four. And uh, actually you would include the four as well, wouldn't you? It's gotta be bigger than 400. What's the probability that the digits are drawn in descending order? Doesn't necessarily mean consecutive. So you could go nine, three, one, but the digits are drawn in descending order. We know the total number of arrangements of the digits would be three factorial, which is six, by the way. Only one arrangement would be in descending order. Therefore, the probability is one in six. So actually, people would have spent a lot of time on that. When you think about it that way, it's very quick, very quick. All right, that'll do us. 14F is a mixture of perms and comms. So we'll add that to our list.